This is part two of our lesson on measures of central tendency. So up to this point, we have taken our numbers. We have written them from lowest to highest. We found the minimum, the maximum, the range, the mode, it had two modes, and the median. And now we were at the point where we were going to calculate the mean. So if I look over at the side here, it says the mean is the average of all the numbers. So a word we often hear instead of mean is average. Um, and to get the mean, we take all of the numbers, we add them together. So that's what sum of numbers means. It means you add all of the numbers together and we divide it by the number of numbers. So how many numbers we have in our data set. So we're going to add all the numbers together and then divide by the number of numbers that we have. So here it says calculate the mean, round your final answer to the nearest hundred. So we often need to round when we're doing the mean because when we're dividing by the number of numbers, it doesn't always divide nicely. So in order to calculate the mean, we are going to take all of our numbers, add them together, and then divide by the number of numbers. So my numbers are up here. So we've got, I think I'm going to use my sorted list. So I'm going to do 32 plus 68 plus 75 plus 75 plus 80 plus 80 plus 83. And then I always like to do a quick count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I have them all. It also helps because on the bottom, I need to divide by the number of numbers, which is 7. Okay, I'm going to use a calculator to do this part. I'm going to add these numbers all together. So I'm going to do 32 plus 68 plus 75 plus 75 plus 80 plus 80 plus 83. And I got 493. So this is 493 divided by 7. Now, I am just going to quickly point out that if this was a long list of numbers, or if this was a test or a quiz, and I wanted to make sure that I was right, I would add first the numbers written out in order from lowest to highest. And then to double check, I would go back to my original list and I would also add those just to make sure that I didn't type something in incorrectly or miss a number. And I wanna make sure that I get the same total. So if I wanna be careful and I wanna check and make sure I did it right, I usually add the numbers that are in order and then I check by adding the original numbers that were given to me in the table. And both times I got 493, so I feel good about that. All right, last thing I need to do is divide by 7. And I got 70.42857143. And I need to round to the nearest hundredth, which we practiced in our numeracy lesson today. So the nearest hundredth would be two numbers after the decimal. So that would be 70.42. And I need to decide whether the number that I have is closer to 70.42 or the next number up, which is 70.43. And to figure it out, I take a peek at that next number, which is an 8, which means we are definitely closer to the rounded up number of 70.43. So the average or the mean is going to be 70.43%. Okay, we have two more questions to look at. Question H says, student number eight. So in my table, I have students one through seven. So it says, student number eight recently moved away. Their mark was 85%. Determine the class median before they moved away. So right now we only have seven students because student number eight has left. But before they left, they had 85%. So we wanna to try to see what the median would be if we included them as well. So I am going to take 
the list of numbers that we have and I'm going to rewrite them down and include 85%. Now, lucky for us, 85% is the biggest number, so it's just going to go on the end, which makes this a little easier. All right, so we had 32, 68, 75, 75, 80, 80, 83, and then now we're adding on 85. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got all eight numbers there. So we are doing median. The median is the number in the middle. If I try just counting in with my fingers, right, and I go in one, two, three spots, it's weird because I end up right in the middle, right? That there's one, two, three, four on this side and one, two, three, four on that side. If I try using the other strategy, which is I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I do eight divided by two to find out what the halfway point is, eight divided by two is four. So if I count one, two, three, four spaces in on this side, and one, two, three, four in on that side, it is the same thing. It puts me in between 75 and 80. So when you have an odd number of things in your data set, right, the median is just going to be the number that's in the middle. When you have an even number of numbers in your data set, the median is going to be in between the two middle numbers. So the median is not 75 and 80. It's the number that's halfway in between 75 and 80. So for this one, to find the median, I'm going to take these two numbers, 75 and 80, and find their halfway point by adding them together and then dividing by 2. We're kind of finding the average or the mean of just those two little points. So 75 plus 80 is 155. and we are dividing that by 2, 155 divided by 2 is 77.5%. Now, some of you may have been able to figure out that it was 77.5 by just figuring out what was halfway in between, but you can always just add the two numbers and divide by 2 to calculate. So if you have an even number of terms, you're going to find that the median is in between the two middle numbers, and you'll have to calculate. But if you have an odd number of terms, which is what we had without that eighth student, then the middle is actually a number that's in your list. Okay, we have one more question, which says, does this data set have an outlier? So the description here says an outlier is a data point that does not fit with the rest of the data. So we're looking at the seven students that are in my table. Is there a number there that doesn't really fit with the rest? And by doesn't fit, I mean is either way higher or way lower than the other numbers. So I notice that the 32%, so student number five, is quite a bit lower than all the other numbers, right? 83 is not that much higher than 80, which is not that much higher than 75, which is not that much higher than 68, but 32 is pretty far away from those other numbers. So I would say that 32 is quite a bit lower, which means I would consider that to be an outlier. So does this data set have an outlier? I'm going to say yes. Student number five is an outlier. Right, and it said to explain, so I'm going to say because their mark is much lower, so is much lower than the others. So I said, yes, student number five is an outlier 
because their mark is much lower than the others. Same thing, if I had a student in that class with 100%, that is actually quite a bit higher than the other people, so I would maybe think that they were perhaps an outlier. An outlier is just a piece of data that's a little too high or a little too low compared to the rest of the data. Okay, well that's it for our lesson on measures of central tendency. You are going to try question number two on the back on your own, problem solve with your seat partners, and then you will end up taking it up together before you get today's homework. All right, good luck.